Hello everybody, Kyle here with High Point Scientific and today we're going to be discussing with you five ways to improve your photographs of a total lunar eclipse. Now on May 15th, 2022, beginning at 10 p.m. Eastern Time or 2 a.m. Universal Time, a total lunar eclipse will be visible over mo most of North and portions of South America. A total lunar eclipse occurs when the moon passes behind the Earth's shadow, turning the moon a deep, dark red color. This red color is why some call a lunar eclipse a blood moon. During the eclipse, all direct sunlight to the lunar surface is completely blocked out. What little light remains that's reflected off the lunar surface is turned red by Rayleigh scattering of blue light by the Earth's atmosphere. This is similar to the reason why the sun's light appears to be yellow in the sky, despite being mostly white as seen from space. And if you're new to astrophotography, you're probably wondering to yourself, how can I take photographs of this spectacular celestial event? Now you can try just using a smartphone to photograph the eclipse. However, you may be disappointed to see that the moon will appear as nothing more than a red blob in your image. To do better, you'll preferably need a telescope or a telephoto lens. In this video, we'll be assuming you have some sort of Canon, Nikon, or other brand of DSLR that you can use to photograph the lunar eclipse. Now the first tip on our list of tips to improve your photographs of the lunar eclipse is to find some sort of way to automate your eclipse photography so you can enjoy the eclipse with your own eyes without having to fit around with any equipment. Now, if you have Mac OS, you're in luck here. A free, readily available software known as Lunar Eclipse Maestro exists that will calculate your exposure time and control your imaging sequence from start to finish, including adjusting the exposure for you based entirely on your location. Lunar Eclipse Maestro works with most Nikon DSLRs and many Canon DSLRs as well. Be sure to read their website for further information on whether or not your camera is supported. However, be aware that Lunar Eclipse Maestro will only work with versions of Mac OS beginning with Mojave, although High Sierra is not compatible with the software either. Now, if you're like me and you happen to use a Windows PC, you'll have to find some sort of other software to be able to control your Eclipse photography. If you're programming inclined, you might want to try to create your own script with Digicam control. You can find a link to a script I've created as a baseline if you want to experiment more with this below. But if you want a more simple setup and you're okay with adjusting the exposure manually, you can simply use an intervalometer and adjust the exposures upwards to two to four seconds as needed. Doing this should ensure you have beautiful pictures of the total lunar eclipse from start to finish. Number two on our list would be to align the moon with some sort of appealing foreground subject matter. This adds a more appealing subject matter to your image We've seen astrophotographers use things like lighthouses, mountains, tree lines, and buildings in alignments with the moon. You can use an app such as PhotoPills to be able to aid in this alignment process. Our next tip would be to use a telescope with a focal length of somewhere around 400 to 800 millimeters. A great example of this would be our Aperture 72 EDR, which should enable you to frame up the moon pretty good with an APS-C sensor or similar. Astrophotographers with a smith cassegrain or longer focal length telescope may wish to consider some sort of focal reducer to fit the entire moon in your field of view. A great focal reducer might include the Celestron F6.3 focal reducer, which reduces your effective focal length by 0.63. Now, if you're not completely sure what the moon will look like in your field of view with your telescope, you can plug in your focal length and your aperture and your camera sensor all into a program like Stellarium, for example, or astronomy.tools, and all of that will be able to help you determine your field of view to be able to get the best photo of the lunar eclipse possible. Now, number four on our list of tips would be to make sure your telescope's tracking mount is set to lunar tracking rate instead of sidereal. Now, sidereal tracking rate refers to the motion in which the stars follow in the nighttime sky. Although it may appear so at first, the moon doesn't actually move at the sidereal rate. Instead, it appears to slightly drift against the motion of the stars in the sky. 
This is a challenge should you wish to make a time lapse of the eclipse. You'll find that the moon will gradually shift out of the field of view throughout the night. Most telescope mounts should have an option to be able to set your tracking mount from sidereal to lunar tracking speed. And our last tip on this list to improve your astrophotography of a lunar eclipse would be to take an HDR or high dynamic range photo of the partial phase of the lunar eclipse. To be able to capture the deep pale reds of the eclipse with the uneclipsed portion of the moon, you'll need to take two different exposures. Take one exposure of the moon that captures only the uneclipsed portion of the moon with a relatively fast shutter speed and about 15 to 20 minutes before totality. Then in rapid succession, quickly take another exposure of at least two to three seconds showing the eclipsed portion. Using a program like Photoshop, you'll be easily able to combine these two images and bring out an absolutely beautiful image of the moon during the lunar eclipse. So really quickly recapping the tips we just went over, you'll want to first automate your astrophotography using a program like Lunar Eclipse Maestro or DigiCam Control. Second, you'll want to line up your image with some sort of appealing foreground subject matter. Third, you'll want to use a focal length from anywhere of 400 millimeters to 800 millimeters. Fourth, you'll want to make sure your tracking rate is set to lunar instead of sidereal tracking. And fifth, but certainly not least, you'll want to make sure that you can take an HDR or high dynamic range shot to get an absolutely beautiful image of the moon. Thank you guys so, so much for watching our latest video on five tips to photograph a lunar eclipse. We hope you find these tips helpful and we hope you can get some good photos as a result of this video. Now, don't forget that there is a lunar eclipse coming up on May 15th, 2022, beginning at 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And we'll actually be having a live stream of that lunar eclipse here on the High Point Scientific YouTube channel. Additionally, in the description, you can check out links to all the products mentioned in the video, as well as a link to an article outlining all these tips for you in a document. But again, my name is Kyle. I'm with High Point Scientific. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video and always remember to keep looking up.